Could the supply chain chaos be a blessing for manufacturers and warehouses locally? If you are a business owner and are looking for ways to rebuild post, -COVID, post the COVID-19 pandemic, stay tuned for more insights because we are here for you. This is the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi. Let's unpack. Congratulations to our winner for Happiness Maluleke for way, walking away with 500 Rand cash. Thank you so much, Happiness, for engaging with us. You can also shoot your shot and share this post and tag your friends. The person with the most shares walks away with 500 Rand cash. Before we get started, let me tell you Tuli's story to help you understand a little bit more about stock warehousing and manufacturing. Tuli is a 27-year-old entrepreneur who owns a spaza shop and a hair salon on the outskirts of Johannesburg. Before the COVID-19 outbreak, she had at least six workers in her businesses. Most of her clients were referrals and family members. In the wake of the pandemic, Tuli's business suffered due to suspicion that she was not following the COVID-19 protocol. Customers were hesitant to buy from her or even come to her salon. Before COVID, I would have more than 10 clients, but with COVID, I only have three, she said. Tuli's salon and spaza have suffered. She couldn't pay the rent since she had no profit, and as a result, her food and stock spoiled. Tuli was on the verge of losing both her businesses. I have lost nothing less than everything, she added. Tuli realized that she was losing a lot of money and needed an immediate solution. That is when she changed her strategy to maintain and attract more customers. She rebranded her, her hair salon and additionally she grew her own fruits and vegetables rather than relying on wholesalers from fresh food produce. Thanks to her efforts and adaptability, her businesses grew despite the chaos caused by the pandemic. So be like Tuli and adapt and overcome because that is the only way you are going to be able to survive post COVID-19. Today's guest exemplifies hard work in your 20s that will surely pay off in your 30s. He holds a degree from the University of Cape Town and has founded and managed one of the country's most successful auction companies. In his 20s, he founded the Levco Property Group and through this he has made, and he has made his way to becoming the CEO of the Alliance Group. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's extend a warm welcome to Rail Livet. Rail, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Yes, hi to me. Good evening. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, good to speak to you from Cape Town. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate the time. Um, before we get into the conversation tonight, you, we are talking supply chain tonight and the chaos that's currently happening because of all of these things that are happening in the market. Um, let's talk exactly what, what it means for, for, the, for someone who's sitting at home who is a business owner and how this can either be uh, an opportunity or, or even a threat to their businesses. Yes, I mean, so, you know, when you talk about the word supply chain, it really means how goods are getting from manufacturers um, and other suppliers. You don't necessarily need to manufacture. They could be assembling. They could be just um, delivering goods to the consumer. Uh, and that's really supply chain. Um, and there's a whole lot of steps in between. So whether goods are made uh, here in South Africa, onshore, whether they're made in China or other places, places in the world, is really to get those goods into the consumer's hands. And, um, you know, when we talk about supply chain chaos, what's really been happening in the world, and it, it did start off um, with the COVID pandemic, is that uh, ships have become full. Um, it's been difficult to get goods to consumers. And that has really started pushing up prices and causing it to become very difficult for consumers to get certain goods. And you and I are gonna start noticing it because we, we arrive and we can't find certain parts and we can't find uh, different things. And it's really because of all the chaos which has happened. And of course, the, the recent war in Ukraine just fueled the supply chain chaos. Mm -hmm. And you know, our, our topic tonight is talking about how this um, this chaos can either be a can be a blessing rather um, for for the local manufacturers and the local warehouses. So, um, talk to us a, a little bit about that in terms of it having a possibility of being a great opportunity for them. So, so and we, I do want to split the two issues because there's 
manufacture, which is really the production of goods locally, and then there is right. this, the warehousing of goods. So I'm, I'm going to deal with the, the warehousing first. And okay. what really happened on a sort of practical level is that um, during the COVID pandemic, COVID pandemic uh, if obviously it affected the ability for people to go out to shopping centers or to shops and to buy goods. But it's not that people stopped consuming. Um, consumers didn't stop eating. It was just how food got to them. So, of course, you know, we have the rise in Uber Eats. Uh, we have the rise in uh, groceries being delivered to people's homes. And, um, and, and warehousing really started getting boosted by that. And it wasn't only in South Africa, but it was globally. So um, what, what started happening is that the uh, people needed to get goods, but they couldn't go out to their local stores and their local retailers to get it. And so they simply got things delivered to their homes or they delivered to their businesses. And at Inner Space, um, where you know, we, we own and manage at the moment, we own and manage about 45 different parks in um, Johannesburg and in Cape Town. Um, you know, like the rest of the world, we got into a bit of a panic because um, we thought, oh, you know, this is, uh, you know, we all did in that first few weeks of COVID. And then all of a sudden we started noticing that there was demand for warehouses. Why? Because warehouses are actually cheaper than retail stores. And all of a sudden people were getting food delivered and this presented opportunity for different companies. You know, I've got, you know, there, there are many different examples. For example, if you're running a restaurant to run an expensive retail operation with chairs, with tables, with cooking, utensils, with big rent, is quite costly, but people were starting to actually make goods. Many people started making goods in small warehouses. Some people even did it from their garages, as an example, and that could be delivered by Uber Eats. So while, while, while for example, and it's not only Uber Eats, there were other forms of delivery. So that started presenting an opportunity for warehouse owners. Now, we saw that here in South Africa, but it, in fact, it was a global trend. And a, um, a global trend was that all of a sudden warehousing and distribution started getting bigger and bigger. And you can see it in any South African cities, you see big warehouses being built and that starts affecting and increasing the demand for warehouse space. But, that, but it only wasn't only for large companies, it was actually for smaller companies. And many small companies started seeing the gap and said, well, hold on a second, can I provide, can I start cooking from small, quite relatively inexpensive warehouses and delivering it straight to the consumer? And you know, I always say to people, if, you, if you're having a bad day, come look at Inner Space. You know, we've got over 1,200 businesses, smaller South African businesses who do a range of different things. But, you know, right across the board from creating supplies, um, providing food, clothing, etc. So that's where there was an opportunity, both for those people who own warehouses, but also for companies that could provide straight directly to the consumer. And, um, you know, I often say, even if you even look at Uber Eats and, you know, a little bit more in Cape Town and in Johannesburg, but uh, but you will see businesses there and you go look online and you say, well, that restaurant actually isn't a traditional restaurant. It really has created an opportunity for somebody to set up a restaurant at a far cheaper basis than what it would to go set up a full restaurant with all the expensive equipment, which would be the consumer facing goods. Now, manufacturing is, is a different story because um, we know that we can, we, you know, to supply, for example, um, food, you don't necessarily have to, to be manufacturing it locally. But what started happening with all the supply chain chaos, a lot of companies, starting with the larger companies, said, but hold on a second, um, if we can't get goods in from China, it's becoming more and more expensive. So if you take, for example, you know, you're looking at the photo behind me, and obviously that's mm -hmm. taken during the day, that's Cape Town port. And the port started getting so congested and the cost to bring containers in from overseas, whether it's China or India, wherever else in Africa <clears throat> would be importing from, it has grown literally since 2019, the cost to bring in a container has gone up four to five times uh, since 2019, sort of pre-pandemic years. So a lot of companies started asking, if I remember correctly, uh, truers were the first one, the big group of started saying, but hold on a second, the cost of bringing goods is, is, is so expensive. Not only is it expensive, but it's becoming a bit unreliable. We're not quite sure if we can get goods into, into the country. Possibly it would be cheaper to manufacture locally. And, you know, the, the Department of Trade and Industries has been actually assisting companies in growing onshoring 
um, by, by this, but actually just been putting up really putting tariffs up for import. So it now becomes cheaper to make goods here in South Africa. Now, mm. it can be large companies um, who are doing it, but it also can be small. And so all of a sudden we started seeing, and we started noticing at Inner Space, we started noticing a lot more local manufacture, a lot more companies producing goods. And of course, that has been a boost for manufacturing. So while COVID was very negative for large parts of the economy, the sort of silver lining has been in this ability to warehouse locally and then to start now manufacturing locally. No, definitely. Thank you so much for that. And um, my next question is um, specifically around um, where we currently are. You spoke about how the, the the Russian war in Ukraine has globally really affected supply chains and how things are becoming... Um, how things have changed uh, post these and not really post them because some of these things are still going on we it looks like this is the new normal as it's been said so i just want us to i just want you to take us through how where we currently are in the market and where we are where we are foreseeably going in the next two to three years in terms of um, access to these things and the growth of those warehouses that are now locally and um the 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 different outlets that are now manufacturing things um, locally. Are we starting to see more of that? Is it something that's going to come up in the in the next couple of years and where we currently are in the market? Well, I think, I mean, to me, I, th I think the real issue actually is that maybe we even need to go a step a little bit be, be earlier than COVID and the Ukrainian war, which I'll talk about in, in, in a moment and how that really has just created further supply chain disruption. One of the big things that have uh, changed supply chain disruption actually has been um, China, which has uh, been very harsh in their lockdown, and uh, and if you look at the, the rest of the world, in many ways, it's sort of got on with it. Um, mm. You know, almost COVID is a is a really has, has been you know it's, it, in many ways it's actually sort of uncleared in many countries, hasn't disappeared. It's still a material risk, but countries have got on with it, including here in South Africa. But in China, they recently they locked down in Shanghai, and when they lock down, that means that their manufacturing locked down. But Taking us back prior to COVID, I think the real great disruptor, and to answer your question, and the disruption um, which has happened has been technology. And what technology as an e-commerce has really allowed to happen is that goods no longer have to go to a shopping center or to a big retail store. It can get to the consumer in different ways. Mm -hmm. And that has been e-commerce. And, that, and so, so to answer your question, I mean, you know, while I... The crystal ball is always unclear because if you look at this war in Ukraine and you look in at COVID itself, it came out of the blue. We wouldn't have guessed it. But the trend has been um, globally that e-commerce has changed the way people buy things. And the way people buy things is straight, is actually cutting out several steps in the supply chain, which is really going to retail stores and taking goods straight to your home. So. For example, if I asked you, how would you buy a television set today? If I'd asked you this question 10 years ago, you know the answer. You would have got in your car, you'd have gone to look at one of the big retail stores, you would have compared prices. But today you literally go on your phone and within one click you can order it and it'll be delivered to your home. So the trend is really has been for more and more warehousing and for more and more goods to get to the consumer. And here in South Africa, and one again just needs to drive around the cities, we look in and, and you know, I, I look around and we start seeing companies which didn't even exist 10 years ago, which are occupying large spaces. You know, companies like, uh, for example, take a lot of, you know, they're taking more and more space because they're getting goods to consumers. Um, many of these sort of, go, what they call ghost kitchens, which are dark kitchens, which are held in warehouses. And then, you know, other companies, I mean, uh, a good example is we buy cars i mean we buy cars is a huge uh, user of big warehousing space so the trend is certainly in this direction and yeah, the, the view is um, both here and, and and globally the view is that, that will continue it, it we're still early on the journey on real e-commerce transactions and that means the trend is good for warehousing now the, the question is really is that trend good for local manufacture now the, yes. the fact is that yes. we, we we live in a world where, as you said, it is the new normal. So maybe the new normal is disruption. And I mean, I, I, you know, it's a possibility that things will settle down in terms of the supply chain because businesses have a wonderful way of actually really evolving and sorting it out. But the, the, the view actually is that throughout the world that um, 
that's that waiting for ships from another country actually is an unreliable way. And so therefore, in countries that can do it, um, that certainly means that what they call onshoring has become a big trend in many countries. And it will, and it has been a trend in South Africa, which is a great sign. And if you take a city like Cape Town, and, you know, um, uh, to, you're too young to remember, but Cape Town was a huge producer of clothing. Now, um, people always talk about, oh, you know, it was a big producer of clothing. And, but the fact is that all of a sudden we're seeing, we're seeing now the larger companies and larger companies trigger smaller companies as well, suddenly starting to produce locally. And that's a great boost for employment. It's something which we must support. And it certainly appears to become the trend. And, you know, obviously we live in a, a macro environment. There are other factors and, um, which affect South Africa, um, the general economy, um, power is probably one of the largest threats because without power yes. we can't manufacture but certainly the trend is good and the trend is here for warehousing and the trend is good for hopefully a lot more onshoring of manufacture. Thank you so much for that Drail. Um, very good and well-rounded conversation that we had there tonight and thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate you taking our time you know to educate a lot of business owners who might be watching this tonight. Thank you so much and enjoy your evening. Yeah thank you. Thank you. Mark. And thank you to you also for engaging with us and staying to, um, till the end of the show. Uh, I'm about to now announce the winner of that 500 Rand cash prize. And I would like a little drum roll, please. You know, as usual, as how we do it, because we want to celebrate with them. Uh, the winner tonight is Shante Evans Santo. Hope I got that right. Thank you so much for engaging with us and sharing and sharing and sharing. We really appreciate the love. Um, and remember, a healthy dose of property information might just be what you need to get you back on your A game. Please don't forget to like, share and follow us on all our social media platforms. This is the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi. Have a great night.